Hey, thanks for taking the time today. Sure. Of course. Thank you for having me, man. Yeah, we um I I only kind of recently started doing these kind of um live inter- like interviews and just live stream type stuff. With- I wish I could say the same. Yeah, really? <laughs> Uh, man, yeah, yeah. You, that's that's the other thing. I I think uh, I've seen you on so many of these shows. That's one of the reasons I reached out yeah. um, to Corpse Paint just to say, hey, like I'd love to talk to Kenny um, about the new project. So let's get started, man. Like talk talk about I am and how how did you meet the guys from Crowbar and how did you guys come together on this project? Well, um, Winstein, Kirk Winstein from Crowbar, I know for probably 30 years or something. Well, I, I think I first met him in 1994. So whatever, do the math. You know, yeah. He's always been a very big uh, Pete Steele fan and he followed Typo from the beginning. That kind of like whole um, New Orleans crew, him, Phil Anselmo, all those guys did. Yeah. So when we had first came through NOLA, probably in 93, 94, that's when I met Kurt. You know, I hadn't met Philip yet, but I met Kurt and came down to one, a show. I forget what the venue was, but that's when I first met him. So I know him forever. So you met Pantera through Kurt? Well, I met Kurt before Pantera. Oh, okay. At Pantera, I first met Dimebag and Rita. They came down to probably the same tour in 93, 94 to a show. We were playing The Basement in Dallas. This I don't even know if it's there anymore. It might be. But yeah, they came down to see us. I guess they were fans, and uh, he, he and Rita were, were fans. This is long before. I think we ended up hooking up with them and touring with them probably almost a year later after that. So, yeah. So I met those guys previous of touring with Pantera. That's crazy. Yeah. I, Go ahead. The only time I saw a typo actually with Pantera, I saw you guys open for Pantera in Salt Lake City. Oh, what a great city to play, man. What year was that? Can you remember? <laughs> it's got to be the, like five. early 90. I think it was Far Beyond Driven era, like 94, I want to say. Yeah, 94. Yeah. It was you guys had you guys set was awesome, too. That's that's the other thing I always loved about Pantera. They always had great opening acts. Yeah, um, that was uh, just an iconic, all uh, uh, unbelievable tour. You know, eight weeks we did with them. It was a long time. A lot of partying. A lot of black tweets, you know, <laughs> dropping a lot of ecstasy. It was the 90s, you know, and, you know, Reader and, and Dime rolled every other friggin' day. And it was crazy. I don't even how any of us played shows. <laughs> That's insane. I, I remember as a kid watching those Pantera videos and just going like, these guys are amazing. Like, how do these guys do this? It's the real thing, too. It was not. None of it was fake. <laughs> yeah. You know, who, who did not stop. Rolling and living that way is now dead. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then there's a few lucky ones of us that are alive, you know, that but, made it through, but we all had a blast. You know? Yeah. Well, I mean, it's, it's, it's cool that uh, you can reflect on it and, and see it with such a, you know, honest, you know, through such clear eyes, I guess. Uh, yeah. Sometimes, uh, the past, the past becomes distorted, you know. So uh, you tend to remember the good things. I think, you know, that's what I remember. There was yeah, plenty of bad. You know, I don't go into <laughs> it right now, but there always is. At that point in our, in our career, they tell you the truth. We were still up and coming, typo. We were just breaking, breaking the surface, and starting and chugging our way towards a gold album. We might have got there already, but at that point, you really have nothing to lose. You only have something to gain and you only have fun to be had, you know? So it was a ball, you know, who just, it was like the philosophy was it could, end, this could end any minute. Let's live it up. Yeah. That's what we did. That's what we did you know? <laughs> Man, you guys had a great typo, had a great run. So, I mean, very, yeah, very long one. Yeah. And I, that record, Bloody Kisses, is just such a legend. I mean, just to be a part of a record like that is such a huge thing, I think. Like, I remember when that record hit, like, I, w- I was showing it because I was a big metal guy, but I hung out with, like, the hippies and the rapper kids and all that, you know. I remember taking that shit to parties and, like, the hippie kids just been like, bro, what is this? This is ill, man. Like, people of all different kind of, like, leanings were into that record, you know. It's a weird, yeah. It was a weird re- record. Very eclectic. 
Anyhow, you know, going on to I am, I guess we got to fast forward a little bit. And uh, yeah, yeah. Probably 2000s. I did a. Uh, I filled in for Tommy Victor and I did a Danzig run. Oh, one of his blackest blacks. Okay. Black, 2007. And um, I had showed up in LA. I did the first rehearsal and uh, Glenn had us all playing at, staying at the La Park Hotel in LA. And at the bar, I ran into this kid, Andrew Spaulding. Right? He was he ended up being the merch guy. He was like, you know, I'm, I'm right now working with two of my favorite bands. My favorite band is Danzig and Typo Negative. So, you know, me and Johnny were doing the Danzig thing. Mm -hmm. So I was like, I got a bottle of vodka in my room. Come to my room. That's it. You know, that's how we headed off. We drank vodka all night and told stories and left. So Andrew has been a long friend now since 2007. And Andrew lives in NOLA. So he ended up, you know, being very close to me, drinking buddies with me. And then, of course, ran into Kirk in the bars in NOLA and became drinking buddies with him. So. This was really his brainchild because he was always like, man, I wonder what it would be like if I got you guys in a room to play together, you know. So uh, fast forward, you know, some years ahead, I get sober. I'm about three years, eight months sober now. And so did Drew. So did Andrew, Andrew Spaulding. And um, he, uh, you know, cleaned up his life, got his shit together, decided I want to go after my dreams. He started his own label, Corpse Paint Records. Mm -hmm. And he was like, I want to finally make this happen and have you and Kirk and Johnny and the guys get into a room and see what happens. And that's how the band started. Like in January, he was like, who's got a window of time in January and this week or whatever. And we all, it all kind of lined up for a minute and he just put up all this money. He put up for the flights, the hotel, the rehearsal studio, then the recording studio. Damn. The next thing I know, I was on a plane. I had a couple of riffs that I pulled out of my phone. I got like a thousand riffs in my phone, sent them to Kirk and, we were thrown into a rehearsal room. It was like over before and we were, we were dizzy. It was so quick, you know, we in a rehearsal room the day before developing the song, throwing the parts together in a recording studio, putting drums down the next day. I mean, we literally did a whole like eight minute jam of the song afterwards, just to make sure we get every kind of drum variation possible. Because Johnny was getting on a plane to go back and play with Quiet Riot. So he was out of there two days. And now we were left with trying to arrange the drums put the music together, add the guitar leads, and then or write lyrics and, and vocals right on the spot. So in two days, Dreams, Dreams Always Die With The Sun is how it was done. I love the song, too. It's Honestly, it's, uh, it's refreshing to hear some heavier stuff with a melodic vocal line, you know? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, I'm always going to go for vocal. You know, I, the barking thing is not me, you know? Yeah. And, um, I think that, being that we both or we all grew up in the 70s, you know, we all grew up listening to music in the 70s as kids, WPLJ and all that stuff. But that's what we, where we come from, a hard rock background, sure. melodic music. So we really hit it off on that level. There was no there was no uh, problem. There was no um, lack of, of vocabulary between us. You know, we just knew what each other was thinking right off the bat instinctively and arranged the song. It came together. Yeah, really, really rapidly. Yeah, I love it. So are you guys do uh she said that you guys are working on a full record. Are you working on a full length album now? Well, yeah, of course. Eventually we want to release a full length album. We had just I just got back from Noah like a week ago. So I flew down there again on another stint, like the twenty second of June. And we did thirteen days. I had three days. I left the plane, I had three days just with me and Kirk in the studio throwing ideas around and then johnny flew in and then we just started writing arranging and recording every day that week so it was like maybe six days in a row that was exhausting wow so uh came back with four songs uh some of them more mapped out than others one really mapped out is really really great powerful song and we're really 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 excited about that and i expect it's gonna be the next single and uh, there's three others still up on the board. One I have a half conceived like um, vocally. And then there's two others that really we just raw put the music together and I'm going to have to come up with some vocals with it for it. And so is Kurt. You know? So right now I'm in my studio, my home studio. We uh, did this recording at OCD recording in NOLA. And, um, Dwayne Simino is uh, recording and um, producing it. So I'm in close contact with him now. I'm doing guitar tracks in my studio and vocal tracks and flying them over to him. 
So we're going to work the rest of it that way, you know. And then the next time we're going to get together as a band will probably be in some, somewhere in early October to try to get another five songs. And then that'll be a full record, you know. That's great. Are you, so are you still doing the silver tone stuff too? Like, are I you- am, I am. I'm, I'm right now. My guys are breaking my balls about that. They're like, come on, we got to get the mixes done. So uh, that on my play too. So um, I have another probably 10 or 15 minutes of music to uh, drop the drums in and mix from that and get my, get Joe in here and get Henry in here to play lay his bass. So that's also on the burner. Awesome. So like, realistically you guys probably won't have a record out till sometime next year. Do you think you'll do touring behind it and everything? Oh yeah. That's the plan. Yeah. Yeah. We already awesome. Motors reaching out to us and stuff. And I mean, we're all in a lot of, we all got a lot of stuff going on. So it may be easiest to piggy pack, you know, tour together or we'll work something out, you know? Yeah. That's really cool. Well, I'm excited to hear more of the stuff. I really like the single and uh, I've been a long time fan of both band so one of my old bands actually played with crowbar like years ago when they came to la hasn't everybody played with crowbar yeah i mean that's it's amazing that's amazing uh-huh. it's no it's just it's it's the work ethic that some of you guys have like i'm always impressed with i i you mentioned tommy victor i talked to him a while ago yeah. and he was talking about danzig and just saying how he kind of like learned business from danzig like danzig runs like a pretty he's a pretty smart business guy with how he does his tours and everything. Yeah. Um, uh, Kirk's work ethic is like we do him and Jamie Josta. Josta's got the, like the sickest work ethic in the industry. You know, and now Josta is managing Kirk. So he's got him on the same run. Kirk did like four European tours already this year. Good. Plus Good the States, you know, it's crazy. And he's, he's only, he's a year older than me. That's pretty rough getting in a van and doing all that. Yeah, I for, I always forget that Kirk play is part of Down as well. So it's kind of like yeah. I I love what you the the blend there seems so much more natural when you consider that with what you guys yeah. are doing. It's almost got like kind of some seven some of that seventies Sabbathy type uh, vibe to it. Absolutely, absolutely. That's why we fit, we fit together really well. We complement each other really well, and Kirk. So yeah, he's got Down too. So you know when Pantera ends, you know Philip's going to want to come back and start writing Down shit. So there's another band that's going to be. Yeah. yeah, a lot of bands flying around. No, but that's cool, man. It's it's it, it must be great to at least be stay busy as a musician. Oh, it is, it is. Because if I wasn't, and you know, you know that that's that would be the most depressing thing for me is to be stagnant and not do anything. I got to be making music. I got to be creative in order to keep my sanity. I hear it, man. Well, I don't want to keep you too much longer. Um, if you if you got a busy schedule, thank you again for for stopping by, and I'm I'm really excited to hear the new stuff. And I like there's there's a, there's a bunch of stuff I could ask you probably about typo, but it's like I feel like you've done the rounds on so many podcasts, it'd be just be like retreading old ground, you know. All right, buddy, thank you, man. It's been great. Yeah, please stop by again. Let's let's talk more uh, as as stuff develops. Like once you guys uh, have another single out, or once you guys have an album ready to drop, or something like that. Absolutely, I'll be happy to. Awesome. Appreciate your time, man. All right, man. Thanks for having me. Take care.